Today Unity is sponsoring this video, more about them in a moment. And this time we got something out of a sci-fi game, really cool stuff and it's a holographic map. This was the most voted project by my patrons, so here we go, that's what we are going to see. You can find this project there in my Patreon page and many others as well, links below. And it's quite technical, but I'm gonna try my best to explain you how you can achieve this. We are not going to use a point cache, we simply need a camera. This works really well with the terrain. And I also tested out with this city that I found in the Unity Asset Store. And the result is actually not that bad. So yeah, I got it from the Unity Asset Store, which from time to time has some crazy sales. And right now they have the New Year sales going on, where you can get AAA assets for your game and improve a lot your project. I left some links below, so make sure to check that out. Plus, I have a super special discount for you, where you can get an extra 10% off of your next purchase. So make sure to use it when you are checking out. So there's two ways we can do this. One is with a point cache, where you assign a particle to each vertex of the mesh, and every time something changes, you need to bake again the point cache. But there is a second method, which is literally recording the scene. Capture with a camera a certain area, then according to the image the camera would output, we could assign particles via RGB values. Which is exactly what we have here. And as you can see, if I move the camera, the terrain, the VFX graph, will update automatically. Which is pretty cool. So that's where we are going to start, by creating a camera that can record the scene. So with right click in our scene, let's create a new camera. I'm gonna call it camera underscore render texture. I'm gonna reset the transform and push it up in the Y 35 units. This is basically the moment where you place your camera on top of whatever you want to create an holographic map from. And rotate the camera 90 degrees. If I turn on the gizmos, as you can see, the camera is perpendicular to the ground, to my scene, which is a basic terrain. And now we can increase the field of view. In my case, around 120 seems to be fine. And then down here, in the environment for the background type, we want a solid color, a black color. And as you can see, we have an output where we can assign a render texture. And that's basically where the magic starts. If we go to one of these folders and we right click create a render texture, we can rename it to render texture underscore terrain, for example. And up here we can control the resolution of the render texture, but we are going to leave it at 256 for now. What really matters is that we assign the texture to the camera we just created, to the output texture. And it's outputting to this render texture. It's low quality because of this color format. It's in 8-bit, the RGB goes all the way down to RGB32, where you can have the most quality. But for now, I'm gonna leave it at RGB8, and by the way, as you can see, we have these RGB channels, and this is what really matters to us to create the holographic map. So, now, if we create a VFX graph with a right click, you can rename it to VFX graph underscore holographic terrain. If we drag this to the scene, I'm just gonna push it up in the Y, and then I'm gonna press the edit button to open VFX graph, and let's see how we can use a render texture in here. So we need to first have access to the render texture, right? So let's create a public texture 2 d property where we can assign exactly that, the render texture. But how do we use this? Well, in some ways it's similar to how you would use it in Shader Graph. You need to sample this texture to have access to its information. If we drag a line from here and search for sample texture 2 d we will find one but we need the UV coordinates. Now let's make something clear. The coordinate of this point in a texture is 1, 1. And this point down here is 0, 0. So X and Y are from 0 to 1, right? And we want to create random coordinates within those values, so we can assign a particle to it. And there's a very interesting thing we can do in initialize particle. By the way, we can remove this set velocity, which is create this custom attribute. In the inspector, we can name this attribute, which is very important. 
you can name it particle random position and we want this to be a vector too so we can create a random values between 0 and, and 1 so let's set the random to uniform for now and we just need to say the minimum of the x and y is 0 and the maximum is 1 and boom we have a bunch of particles with a random vector 2 from 0 to 1. Now we can use this custom vector 2, this custom attribute, with a get custom attribute. We just need to make sure that the name is the same, exactly the same. And with the same attribute type, which is vector 2. And we can pass this to the UV input of the sample text to 2D. But if we were to use this in a set position, nothing would change and that's because first we need to tell each particle that their new position is going to be somewhere between that random 0 and 1 vector 2 we can copy and paste this get custom attribute from there we can create a new vector tree where the z is going to be 0 and if we feed this to the set position now we see something different happening if you look closely they are being placed according to the UVs of a square, but only diagonally and not randomly as it should be because of one simple thing, because the set particle random position is set to be in uniform mode instead of per component. As soon as we change it, we get particles being spawned in a square. Oh, and by the way, lifetime doesn't need to be random and we can leave it at one second for now. Let's take care of the aspect of this really quick. Down here we can say it's additive and for the main text we can use the default particle that comes with Unity. It's more than enough. We can also control the size really quickly with a set size and create a property for that. We can call it the holo map particle size 0 0.01. Maybe that's too small, but if you have noticed, nothing changes because set size over life is set to over right instead of multiply. Now for this curve, we can say it goes from big to small. Something like this is enough. And yeah, they are really small. So 0 0.05, okay. Oh, and we don't need to fade them away. And let's crank this up, the particle count. First, the capacity to, to 100K and the rate to 1000 for now. And by the way, you can create a property for this. So you can control it in the specter, a float, an holo map particles rate, for example. Okay, so now that we have these white dots, we can better understand what's happening. And as you have noticed by now, they are forming a completely square shape, which is a good start because that's the boundaries of a text. Let me just push the set lifetime up here real quick, because now we can use another set position. They go all to zero because they need to know their previous position. So we can use a git attribute position. And if we add to this the information that comes out of the texture, of the sample texture, you may not notice, but they are spawning according to the pixels of the texture. What we are missing here is the use of the color that comes from the texture the RGB values. We can do it with a set color before or after and connect what comes out of the sample text to 2D. And as soon as we do it, as you can see, they are barely visible because most of the things are far away from the camera. But if we increase the rate, now we are able to see what the camera is recording. Let's just rotate it minus 90 degrees in the X. And if you look closely, it has some thickness, but we need to increase it. We did another set position. We can once again use the get attribute position and add more information to this. In this case, we only want to offset the Z, so we can create a vector tree, pass the information from the X and the Y, and for the Z, we can multiply it with a property, with a float. We can call it the holomap Z scale default value of 1 and connect it here to the Z of the vector tree and then pass this information to another set position block. Nothing will change because if we go to an inspector now, if we start increasing the Z scale, here we go, we get some thickness. 
it's very dull because we haven't yet increased the intensity of the color. We can do it with a set color down here in the output part coquad. Set the composition to multiply and add a color property, the hollow map color, for example. Set the RGB and A to 1, connect it down here, and now in the inspector, we can go ahead and increase the intensity, for example. I'm gonna leave it at white, but you can choose whatever color you want, of course. Anyway, this is the first and most important part, the basis of the holographic map. From here you can do a bunch of things. For example, if you want this to be static instead of always spawning particles, you can go ahead and create a burst of particles, disable the constant spawn rate, disable the set lifetime, and down here disable the multiply size over life, and since they don't have a lifetime, they will live forever and they will always stay in the same position. Alright, so, but I'm gonna still use the constant spawn rate, so if you move the camera, it will continuously update the holographic map. You can also increase the lifetime, and you will have a much more dense map, of course, because the particles are living longer. Anyway, now let's move on to the next part, where we create some projectile lines. So first, let's create a group for the holographic map, then we can copy and paste this with Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and let me just disable here the constant spawn rate, this is for the projector lines, 1000 for the particles is enough, and most of the magic happens down here in the output, we can use an output particle line, and they have a target offset that we can play with. Let's first remove this output particle quad, and from here now we can get the position of each point, of each line, multiply it by minus 10, for example, and then add another vector tree where the x and y are going to be 5. Connect this result to the target offset, and since we are offsetting the target to the center, now the z will control how high you want these projectile lines to be. And they are completely black because it's in alpha mode, we can set them to additive. And here we go, we get a really cool result from here. You can then obviously use a set color, change it to multiply, and you can choose another color for this if you want, or create a property as well. And then you can create a few more properties to control these values, of course. What really matters from here is, if you look closely, you will notice that from time to time we see a point in the middle of nowhere, and that's because the camera is rendering our holographic map. So it's very much advised to set the layer of the holographic map to something else besides the default one, like transparent effects. And then you can go to the camera and in the culling mask drop down menu you can disable transparent effects which is where the holographic map is and as you can see now you will have no longer floating points out of nothing. Now the cool thing is that we can create some scanning lines. We just need to copy the holographic map. 1000 for the rate is enough. These are for the scanning lines by the way. Which is very simple, it all happens up here when we create this random vector to the particle's random position. If we set the minimum y to 1, as you can see we have a line on the side of the map. Now what if we could animate it? And we can, we can use a simple curve for example. We can use this graph but the opposite, the first key is 1, the last key is 0. We can connect it to the y of the minimum and the maximum. Now we just need a way to animate this through time, right? And there is a time variable that we can use, which is called the total time VFX, but we need to slow it down, we can multiply it by 0 0.1. Oh, by the way, this is where you control the scanning line speed. And we may not see it very well, but it's there. Let me just change the color to something like blue and increase the intensity really a lot so we can see it. And here we go. Look at this, really awesome stuff. And you can control the trail by playing with the lifetime. 
Oh, and as you can see, the line stopped right there. That's very simple to fix. If we go to our sample curve, in this right cog, we can choose ping pong instead. And once it reaches the, and once it reaches one of the extremities, it goes back and it keeps on going on just like this. You can also switch to loop if you want a different feeling. Now there's a very simple trick we can do, which is add a periodic burst to the spawn. A count of 250 is enough. And if we set the delay to 0.3 or 0.5, as you can see, it will leave a nice trail of lines behind. And it really adds a nice touch. We are just missing one thing, right? We are missing the projector lines, the blue projector lines, to complement the whole idea of these scanning lines, right? So it's very simple to do it. We can copy the projector lines once again, and the changes are going to be the same for the scanning line, which is basically animating the Y value of the particle's random position vector 2. We can copy from here. Ctrl C, Ctrl V, connected to the Y, boom, kada boom, and here we go. We have some projecting lines following the blue ones. Oh yeah, we just need to set the color to match the blue. Here we go. Uh, look at this, it's really awesome. We have a really nice result. This method works really well with the terrain, but I'm sure this is a really nice starting point for you to create something awesome, to improve this and make it look even better. If you want to get your hands on this project and support the channel, this is all available on my Patreon page and there's plenty, plenty of assets there that you can get. I want to take this moment to appreciate each Patron that supports me and as usual a special shout out goes to the top tier Patrons which are Alak Frost, Bradford Errant, Kruby Dooby Doo, Daniel Hatchcock, David Dacke, David Maid Lars, Derek Benson, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Eric Hudson, FT92, Goblin Plague, Leonard Farage, Little Tsai, Maxim, Mograf Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Stefan Zarkov, Verisuta, Sonan Chin and Ingo Das. Really appreciate the support guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. To everyone who watched, please like and subscribe and I really hope to see you in the next video as well. So thanks and bye.